we'll be working on making this dog crate hide better in plain sight. Hey guys, don't look too close because this is part one where we build the whole body of a pellet wood table. This is my first pellet wood table build. Its specific purpose is to hide a dog crate in plain sight. The dog crate's technically right in the foyer and uh, well, my wife wanted a way to conceal it and make it more practical for the living space. So this whole project is going to kind of be a budget centered project. So we'll be using a lot of like pallet wood. Uh, I got a whole bunch of pallets, you know, pretty much free. It just had to pay for the price to rent a truck to move it. So we're kind of be designing as we go using slats for the top. So the first thing I had to do is measure it. So I need the legs to be far enough on either end that and tall enough to get the clearance to slide the crate out. The other thing is the legs, we do not want the legs to block either of the gates, whether it's this gate or this gate. We would like to make both functional, if at all possible. Something we'll be running into later, you will see too, is I'm using slats for the top. I'm running the slats this way, just because they're thinner slats, uh, it'll give them better support. I'm still working out how that is all gonna anchor together, so we'll find that out together. So I chopped off the best of the bad ends, and then that gives me a general length for my pallet slats. And then I'm going to, I just need them to be like an inch or two longer. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to anchor some pieces of wood, scrap wood, and then a sacrificial wood that I can then put, put the slats up right next to each other. And then I'm going to run the crack through on the table saw, or circular saw will do too, just to try to make sure the boards butt up as close as possible. I don't have a joiner. And, uh, well, I'm thinking that's probably the fastest and best way to go about doing this. So I'm pointing out something from the viewpoint of hindsight here from experience. There are two things that are going on here. Number one, I am pre-drilling. That is a big thing to keep in mind if you're putting the screws near the end of the pallet wood because it's very prone to splitting there depending on the age of the pallet wood and, and a few other factors. The thing that you do not want to do is clamping the pallet boards for this whole process is because when you clamp it, it squeezes the bow out of the wood and when you run it through the table saw or circular saw trying to make them fit together tightly, well the bent board will just spring right back out and you end up with the bow again so the joints don't fit tightly. So keep that in mind, don't clamp it together. So I went through and organized all the boards I was going to use for the tabletop. The thing also that really was helpful was I took a pencil and marked at each of the top of the boards a number. So I think it was like somewhere between 1 and 16-ish boards. I'm not sure what the number was. But that when when I took each board and measured it or cut it, I knew exactly right where to put it. So everything lined up with all the other boards on the tabletop when it was all said and done. Now what's important here that I didn't understand at the point of this particular clip is that the sacrificial piece of wood, you want to have that pre-cut to the exact width of the slats you're sending through the table saw because when you're bringing this whole setup to the table saw, you probably have your rip fence or whatever you're using as a rip fence if you don't have a rip fence like I don't. Uh, that's going to get in the way and it's going to hit your rip fence. That extra long piece of sacrificial wood. Here you can see my sacrificial piece of wood that I'm screwing the uh, slats to is just the right width so it does not get in the way. Let's see this lovely clip again where I split out the board I'm screwing into. Uh, if you're trying to save time and not have to pre-drill everything, here's a quick tip that I learned from somebody, and that is take your screw, run it backwards at first, and kind of burn the wood by pressing down, running the screw in the opposite direction, and then flip your driver around and screw it in the proper way. Usually this tip works and can save some time. I'm not 100% sure why it seems to work. There are a few occasions though where the board does still split, so it's not 100% foolproof, fail-proof, or whatever. So here you can kind of see where these split apart. Let's see, I'm going to grab a pencil for a sharp point here. Let's see if I can angle this so you can kind of see. I think in the camera you can kind of see where on either end it's very tight but in the center it's bowed. So what I'm going to want to do is I want to measure so that I can cut this bow clean out. 
So I almost want to split the difference between these. This board is actually the straighter board. I'm going to grab a uh, square. Oh no, that one's actually pretty well blown itself. I would not have guessed it. This is actually the straight board. So we're going to actually want to favor this side with the saw blade so we cut more off of this board. So here's the finished one. Here are the people I can see right through there. You see that? It gets tighter at the top, but then it gets tighter at the bottom. So I'm going to be running the table saw blade up through here and try to split the difference so that these boards will actually evenly fit together. It's not going to be perfect again. This is not perfect. I don't have the perfect tool set up or any of that. But we're trying to get the best results with what tools we have and what wood we have. Uh, so this is going to be somewhat more of a rustic table when we're done, but we'll end up with a good result. It's now time for more measuring. Measuring from the, the groove between the two slats to the edge, just to know where to put the rift bend so that the table saw blade goes right between the two boards and gives a clean matching surface where both boards butt up perfectly for a glue joint. Now, I didn't squeeze these together when I put these screws in because I wanted to keep them in their natural warped shape so when the saw blade cut through it cut some of the warped edge off versus if I would have squeezed it down screwed it down and the saw blade went through the wood would have sprung back to its warped shape but let's take this apart and see if we need to run this through again and that is much better it's not perfect but it's now there's a joint now that can actually be glued together. Well, I don't have a clamp long enough, so we'll just use two of them. We'll just hook them together and, well, it'll work. Now it's time for the stickiest subject in this video. Glue! It's time to glue up all these joints. So I found I have this big bottle of glue and I'm going to use it. So I put it on a scrap piece of wood and I'm using it as an applicator to help give an even spread of glue. Okay, I'm going to add a weighted board across here to help keep everything down when I clamp it. Actually, I take that back. I'm going to need some weighted boards. More than just one to reach across it. Okay, I'm going to have to get wedges and almost wedge each one to make sure each one stays squashed down, but i got to clamp the next, the, this side in. I'm using gems to help make up the differences for the unevenness of the boards as they're drying hopefully into a flat tabletop. I keep using these more in the workshop than I do lifting them for exercise. I probably should lift them for exercise. So to give a little idea of what I'm thinking about doing, we need these tape legs to be able to remove so we can carry this upstairs and move it around the house or whatever. I need some handy dandy volunteers, i.e. scrap wood. So to make the leg so it goes in like so. So instead of just like screwing it and gluing it to the skirting or whatever this is called on the table, I am going to make a little pocket for it. And I'm gonna build a corner piece around it so then this can pull out and go in and then we're going to use some screws so the screws going to be pulled out but the idea is so it's going to be tight around the leg
I got the legs all sanded up, the, the, this part of the table, or the, whatever, if it's just called a skirt or what it's called, I'm not sure. Um, I'm ready to glue and nail those parts together. I'm going to use finishing nails, because I'm hoping the finishing nails really won't show too much from the front. We're going to be probably putting a dark stain or a paint, so probably it's not going to matter too much on, uh, what I do in this case. Already there's a lot of holes and things in this stuff because it is pallet wood and that's okay because we're kind of going to kind of embrace that feeling in this. Oh, this is such a fas fashionable dust mask. I'm going to take it off. I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using what I believe is called a picture frame clamp. It holds everything at 90 degree angles um, so that I can hopefully glue and then nail and hold the, this frame together that the tabletop will sit on top of. And then I got to build everything that holds the legs in place. So here I'm cutting the parts to make the hole that connects to the table apron, the part that I called wrongly the skirt earlier, uh, but this makes a little pocket I can slide the legs into so they're removable. Now that they are all cut, it's time to start the assembly process by gluing them before nailing. Okay. Leaning into the project. Um, the corners have dried and the legs are actually not anchored in. Uh, right now they're just sitting in the pocket. So the legs slide out like that. So the tabletop's going to stop them from sliding up further and then there's going to be screws coming in. Now that the legs and the table apron have been sorted along with the pocket for the legs, it's time to sand the tabletop and try to make things as smooth or semi-smooth as possible while keeping somewhat of the pallet wood character. I don't know if you can see how much of a divot there is here, but I'm gonna try to take out a little bit of that and round over that corner some. It's already been decreased some. There was a quite a uh, sharp lip there because this board I wasn't able to get flat when I was gluing. So we're trying to correct, make that a little less of a abrupt difference. It's time to make sure everything lines up right and measuring the lip going around the top of the table between the apron and the tabletop. So what I am measuring here and making is actually a brace that goes underneath the table that each of the tabletop slats anchor into. And I'm notching it out to fit the apron pocket for the legs. I don't want to put the uh, drill the holes too deep, so I'm going to measure. I know if I don't drill deeper than the screw, I'll be safe. So I'm just giving myself a point of reference when I'm drilling, because I know at that depth I should be safe.
put some screws right along the face of this. That's what's going to anchor the, the, this part to the tabletop. I'm going to put them as close as I can to the tabletop here so they'll be harder to see. There are better ways of possibly doing this, but <sighs> I'm not exactly sure what those all are at this point because, again, this is a learning process for me. Okay, the table is fully assembled. Uh, we're gonna carry it upstairs and put upstairs. This is, by the way, make sure to watch the end of the video to see this set up. Just to give you guys a heads up, this is part one. There'll be a second part to this video where we will make the dog crate uh, more hidden with a, well, I'll keep that surprise for you guys for the next video. Uh, there'll be a part two on camouflaging, hiding the dog crate underneath this table. So let's make sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, comment down below, and uh, well thank you for staying patiently watching this through with me on my first pallet wood table build. Uh, we're going to now go upstairs, put this in its place, and have fun watching it, and we'll see you in the next video where we make the concealment complete for this hidden dog crate, uh, just to make living areas a little nicer. <laughs>